Good evening, I'm Shogh Mohammed, and this is the 7 o'clock news. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at the Taibiya Palace today His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Royal Highness has recalled the noble directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to adopt initiatives aimed at promoting coexistence in the community. His Royal Highness the Premier and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince underlined keenness to adopt initiatives that represent a roadmap for all government institutions to carry out the Royal Directives. They pointed out the importance of using the educational curricula to foster interreligious dialogue, coexistence, immunize generations, and reinforce their peace loving nature. They also emphasized tolerance and coexistence, which have characterized the Bahraini community throughout the Kingdom's history. The Royal Highnesses reviewed regional and international developments and spotlighted the positive outcome of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit to the United Kingdom and his attendance of the Lord High Admiral's Parade. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister lauded the contribution of such visits to strengthening Bahraini-British cooperation, mainly in the military and defence field. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today at Qaybiya Palace the cabinet meeting in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, a Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The cabinet hailed the success of the Gulf Joint Drill Gulf Shield 1, whose concluding ceremony was attended by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which was recently held under the patronage of the custodian of the two holy mosques. King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and in the presence of the leaders and senior officials in brotherly and friendly countries. The cabinet affirmed that the drill enhances Gulf security and military abilities and increases coordination and cooperation between the forces of participating countries, hailing the effective participation of the Bahrain Defense Force and their high competency in the drill. The cabinet commended Bahrain's winning the membership in the Committee on Non-Governmental Organizations of the Economic and Social Council, which affirms the international community's recognition of Bahrain's achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad. The cabinet also reviewed the results of the 29th Arab League Summit, which was held in Saudi Arabia recently, where the cabinet praised the decisions of the summit for their support to Arab solidarity and enhancement of joint Arab work. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister instructed the concerned authorities to facilitate the establishment of banquet halls in various governorates according to a mechanism that regulates the guarantee meeting and needs of citizens.
The cabinet approved a new draft law that protects the rights of those who have developed or discovered a new plant type and offers them protection for 25 years for commercial production of trees and fruits, as well as 20 years for other agricultural crops. The law requires registration of the new plant type in the Ministry concerned with agricultural affairs. The draft law also regulates the rights and duties arising from the development of new plant types. The draft law will provide an opportunity for plant breeders to develop new types of high economic and productivity value and to encourage investment in this area. The cabinet approved the formation of a committee headed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to follow up on the implementation of suggested projects and initiatives with the agencies and organizations affiliated with the United Nations. The committee is formed to ensure the compatibility of such projects with the priorities of the government's action plan and the Bahrain Economic Vision of 2030. The cabinet also approved the registration of the Arab Federation for Voluntary Activities, which was announced in Bahrain in May 2016 at the Arab League headquarters. The federation includes a number of civil societies interested in voluntary work and aims at achieving cooperation between voluntary bodies and Arab countries through training programs that aim at developing the voluntary work movements. The cabinet referred to the legislative authority a draft law amending Article 18 of civil service issued by decree by Law 48 for the year 2010 following a proposal submitted by the Representatives Council. The cabinet discussed two proposals submitted by the Representatives Councils regarding allocating land for a banquet hall in the Southern Governorate and the other one to allocate a headquarters for a youth centre in Selma Bud. Under the patronage of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary Chairman of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the opening ceremony of the fourth edition of the Mixed Martial Arts World Championship was held yesterday. The tournament, which is organized by the BMMAF, will take place from the 23rd of April to the 5th of May. His Highness Sheikh Khalid asserted that the main objective of the local championships is to support the wider spread of combat sport under the umbrella of the Federation and to encourage Arab youth to practice these sports in a way that highlights their abilities and gives the opportunity to discover more talents and distinctive elements. His Highness also said that this tournament comes in line with his vision of supporting combat sports in the kingdom, hoping to achieve more successes through the formation of national teams capable of participating in upcoming world competitions. His Highness noted that Bahraini sports has the full support of His Majesty the King, who contributed to the achievement of Bahrain's progress in various games, especially mixed martial arts. He added that the outstanding follow-up of His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth and sports affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has pushed forward plans to develop and upgrade Bahrain's mixed martial arts sports in order to put the kingdom in the number one spot in the sport internationally. His Highness praised the remarkable interaction and participation of local and golf clubs in this tournament, stressing that combat sports have become the focus of interest of the younger generation. He added that the support continues to create a suitable environment for youth to practice these sports, with fair competitions in accordance with international regulations that encourage a safe environment for such competitions. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the graduation ceremony of the 27th batch of the Ibn Khaldun National School which was held yesterday evening at the Gulf Hotel in the presence of a number of royal family members, officials, students, parents and guests. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa conveyed the congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the graduates and wished them continued success. He said the government of Bahrain places education at the top of its agenda as it is an essential pillar for the advancement of the country. Sheikh Ali expressed his pride in the advanced levels and indicators achieved by Bahrain, pointing out that encouraging investment in education enhanced the kingdom's efforts in developing human resources and maximizing its contributions to economic and social development. He praised the efforts of the Bin Khaldun National School in promoting the outcomes of education by adopting a creative approach and keeping abreast of modern technology to produce distinguished generations of graduates. Member of the Board of Trustees, Sattam Malik Slaibi, gave a speech in which he thanked His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronizing the ceremony and for his continued support to education in Bahrain. 
He stressed the special care the, that the government gives to the Bin Khaldun National School since its establishment in 1983 as an incentive for the school staff to continue progress and excellence. He also thanked the Deputy Prime Minister for attending the ceremony and for his constant support to the school. The Executive Director of the Diplomatic Institute at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Amnira bin Khalifa bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he congratulated the graduates and wished them every success. The Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, received today at Bayan Palace the Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Muhammad Al Ramehi and the Advisor of His Majesty the King for Media Affairs Nabil bin Yaqub Al Hamar on the occasion of their visit to Kuwait to attend the Arab Media Forum. The Kuwaiti Emir welcomed his guests and hailed the fraternal and historic deep rooted relations between the two countries and their people and the development they witness in all fields, especially in media affairs. His Highness requested them to convey his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and for his Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his wishes of further development and progress to the Bahraini people. Kuwaiti Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Jabir Al Mubarak Al Hamad Al Sabah also received at Bayonne Palace the Information Affairs Minister and His Majesty the King's Advisor and hailed the depth of relations between the two countries' leadership and people. The Minister and His Majesty the King's Advisor conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the Kuwaiti Emir and Prime Minister and their wishes of abundant health and happiness for their Highnesses and the Kuwaiti people. He also expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. The Minister also met with the Kuwaiti Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Mohammed Al Jabri, and reviewed ways of enhancing the media cooperation and coordination between the two countries. The Minister toured radio, television and technical affairs sections in the Kuwaiti Ministry, accompanied by a number of officials. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain condemns the approach of Qatari fighter jets against the UAE civil Airbus A320 from Dammam Airport to Abu Dhabi, carrying dozens of passengers while flying over international waters on the International Air Corridor in the Bahraini Flight Information Region, reiterating that these provocative and repeated acts, which the state of Qatar bears responsibility for, represent a threat to passengers and endanger their lives, a threat to the safety of civil aviation, and a serious violation of relevant international laws and conventions. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirms the right of the Kingdom of Bahrain to take all measures with the International Civil Aviation Organization, other relevant organizations and UN agencies to safeguard the safety and security of civil aviation and passengers against irresponsible and illegal Qatari practices. It also stresses the full solidarity of the Kingdom of Bahrain with the United Arab Emirates in all actions it takes to confront these violations in order to ensure the safety of civil aviation and to protect the lives of civilians and innocent people. The Civil Aviation Affairs said in a statement today that Qatari fighters flew dangerously close to an Emirati Airbus 320 flight ETD-88 en route from Dammam to Abu Dhabi at 10.50 a.m. The statement added that the flight met all requirements and the plane was flying at an altitude of 25,000 feet above international waters. The Qatari fighters flew too close to the UAE civilian aircraft, jeopardizing its safety, which required the intervention of the air control in Bahrain to take the necessary procedures to maintain the safety of the passengers. The statement also said that the incident, which is a clear violation of international regulations, threatened the safety of international air traffic, posed serious risks to them and put lives of the passengers at risk. It noted that Bahraini reserves the right to take all the measurements with the International Civil Aviation Organization and related organizations to put an end to such illegal practices carried out by the Qatari authorities. Commenting on the U.S. Department of State's 2017 reports on human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs regrets the false information it contained, as well as the disregard of the progress made by Bahrain in promoting and protecting human rights. Bahrain also regrets that the report includes names of some individuals involved in criminal cases and refers to them as political or human rights activists, despite that they have been convicted of crimes punishable by law and sat for a series of trials that offered all litigation guarantees, including the right to defense and independent judiciary. It is also regrettable that the report involves baseless allegations, both in legal terms and in reality, as the Kingdom respects rights and freedoms and provides all means and mechanisms of justice, such as the Office of Ombudsman, the Prisoners and Detainees Rights Commission, the Special Investigation Unit and the National Institute for Human Rights. The report ignores the progressing democratic practices in the Kingdom of Bahrain, including the legislative authorities' practices, freedom of expression in various media, free activities of non-governmental organizations, as well as respect of all other civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights as per the Constitution, national legislation, and international human rights conventions to which the Kingdom has committed itself. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs hopes that in the future, such reports will be more fair and informed and will obtain information from credible sources, institutions, and stakeholders, in order to be neutral and non-selective. In this regard, we note the great efforts being made by all the authorities in the Kingdom to ensure human rights are respected and protected and are in conformity with the national constitution and legislation, as well as international human rights obligations. 
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs also notes the Kingdom's enjoyment of international community's appreciation, as evident in its recent election to the membership on the Committee on Non-Governmental Organizations of the Economic and Social Council. This is in addition to the acclaims the Kingdom of Bahrain has received by many world countries during the discussion of the Kingdom's third National Universal Periodic Review at the UN Human Rights Council for its tangible human rights achievements. Bahrain affirms that it will remain fully committed to all its obligations under international human rights conventions and to cooperate with all relevant international bodies and mechanisms, while the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will thoroughly study the content of this report and respond to it in more details later.